Hai, Assalamualaikum. Uh, alright, uh, this is the third sub-module uh, that is about conflict resolution. Okay, so what is conflict resolution? Okay, as the name, okay, the conflict resolution basically is how to solve uh, if there is any conflict uh, amongst the information or the knowledge that we gather from the experts. Okay, so you need to remember from the early of this subject, uh, you have learned how to uh, extract information from the expert. And then you also have learned how to represent this knowledge into certain system format. Alright, and then uh, that include the logic, the uh, AOV, frames and etc. Alright. And then uh, we learn how a machine can actually deduce this information, infer to this information. So what happens if there are information or knowledge which are conflicting? Okay, so this is actually all the sources of uncertainty. Uh, it can be either because information is not enough to trigger a correct rules. Okay, or the implication of our rules that is the if then a week. Alright, uh, it also can... Uh, caused by a language representation okay the knowledge that we are extracting uh, is not suitable with the representation that we chose okay uh, maybe there's no data about the information uh, that was triggered at that time or simply because expert opinion clashes okay because we have two or three experts and some of them clash opinions so how to solve this okay some of it uh, you have learned before Okay, uh, we have to measure the proof. Okay, uh, this can be also carried out by using fuzzy logic. Okay, and we can also solve this problem by finding the probability values. Okay, we have learned this as well. So today, there's another one methods of measuring the proof, which is the um, certainty factor. Alright, let's look at the conflict resolution. So, conflict happen when two or more head in rules are similar. So, when I say head, that is the if part. Okay. So, the if part clashes with the other rules. Okay. For example, rule 1, if light is green, then proceed. Okay. Number 2, if light is red, then stop. Okay. This is about the traffic, right? uh, traffic lights. The third rule is, if light is red, then proceed okay so this is conflicting with rule number uh, number one okay if light green then proceed if light is red then proceed as well okay conflicting with number two is the head light is red light is red but the action is different this one is stop and the third one is to proceed so how can we solve this because if you use a forward chaining we will start with rule number one Okay, so if that condition light is red, we will look at rule number one. Which one says uh, light is green at that point of time? Okay, so only rule number one, so they will proceed this. Okay, if that condition is the light is red, okay, so they will go from rule number one, they go to rule number two because light is red, then automatically they will stop. But, uh... The other action will be taken if you use a backward chaining. Okay. The condition now is uh, proceed. So, if you want to find which rule says about proceed, there's rule 1 and rule 3. So, they cannot deduce that the condition now, the light is green or red. Okay. So, there are a few uh, rules. Okay. Uh, when we list down the rules or knowledge from the expert first one the higher position in Q will be read first by our uh, machine okay that's mean that's the priority we put the higher position in the Q second one is a meta rules okay that is a rules about the rules uh, the rules from expert are more important than the novice okay and the third one is uh, rule met uh, meta rules number two saving life is always on top okay any rules uh, that is to save lives must be given a priority. Okay, 
uh, a part of priority list we the uh, the machine learning will have to use the most recent update database the most recent updated knowledge and they will also try to match the longest matching rules okay for example you have two head proceed and proceed okay so they will find which one is the longest if okay so if the first one if only if a then proceed the rule number 10 if a and b and c or d then proceed they will use the rule number 10 okay <coughs> try to fulfill rule number 10 okay do we need to consider this yes very much because it's a way of human thinking and that's what makes our decision uh, sometimes changes from situation to situation but it's always correct okay so we include this in rules okay when we ask expert okay expert says this okay sangat bahaya or mungkin akan or sedikit bahaya it's not accurate okay so that's why we have come up with a fuzzy logic okay to measure the uh, strength of the linguistic variables okay <clears throat> so another usage is by using a certainty factor okay sorry there's a wrong spelling there <coughs> okay so what is certainty factor it's just an integer to show level of confidence on a specific rules okay so we says that uh 90% uh, com certainty factor or confidence factor, it will rain. Okay, so that means I truly believe that it will rain. Okay. Again, spelling, sorry. So, total need to be, need not be 100. Okay. Or 1. Okay, it doesn't need to be, it's not like a probability. Uh, it has to be 1, no. Okay. Sometimes this is also known as belief and disbelief. Okay, the certainty factor or the confidence factor. Right. So, if I say that 90% uh, certainty factor, it will rain. Okay, and I can also say that, but I think 30% it will uh, not rain. Okay, so it doesn't have to be 100. Okay. So, let's look at certainty uh, factor with condition. Okay, the rules or knowledge are more important than the certainty factor itself. Okay, certainty factor is just a support. The rules is more important. Okay, and belief and disbelief are mutually independent. Okay, that's why I say if I say I my certainty factor for it will rain is 90, 90%. Okay, and I, uh, because it's mutually independent, I can say that my certainty factor I am confident about 30 to 40 percent that it will not rain okay so it, because it doesn't uh, related uh, with my belief of it will rain okay so let's look at a uh, example here okay example of how to deal with certainty factor with n rules okay if inflation is high with a certainty factor of 0 0.5 and okay there's an n here an unemployment rate is more than 7% with the cf of 0 0.7 and bond bond price falling okay with a cf of 1 then share prices will decrease okay so this is a rules about uh, share and stock market and etc okay Okay, so all head need to be true. Okay, because it's N. Okay. Uh, and then the certain tail, certainty factor on tail is the minimum of, minimum of all in the head. Because it's N. Okay, so if you want to know what is the certainty factor or the confident fa factor to say that share price will decrease. Okay, it is the minimum of everything we have on the head. Okay, so in this case, what is the certainty factor that a share price will decrease? You have here in the head part, you have 0 0.5, 0 0.7 and 1. If it's an N, you have to take a minimum. So that means the certainty factor for 
uh, detail part will be 0 0.5. Okay, how about all? Okay, if it's all, that means only one of the head part uh, is true. Okay, at least one. And uh, the setting, the CF value for the tail part is the maximum between the uh, among uh, the head part. Okay, so for this case, we have 0 0.7 and 0 0.85 because it's all, we will take CF 0 0.85 to say, to say that the share price will increase. Right. I hope you can understand this. Uh, and then, of course, I will give you some uh, quizzes and exercise uh, to write about the synthetic factor. Alright, that's all. Thank you.